something a little bit different. Film a little bit of the setting rods up, pulling the rigs out, what rigs I'm using, what bait I'm going to be using. So keep an eye on that for me. Today, instead of using two rods and one spare rig, I'm going to use three rods because I'm on my own. So. That was a bite already. That's on crab as well. So I'm hoping there's another dreaded dogfish going to be hitting every single crab I put out, but here's a quick look at my <clears throat> my hound rig. A lot of people choose to use one hook, but choose to use a fixed panel hook, two four o catfish, short pulley rig, seven ounce lead, hundred pound straight through. Might actually be a hound because it's gone. It's getting excited now, it's a bit of a bow line. And I've cast that way and the line's more that way. Lovely frozen crab today from Kevin Ping down in Kyler Anglin, down in Trilight, Ely. So, just give it a little snip. It's probably one of the only times I use a bait and needle, but it's still hard, so it will break up the two together. over the one what I tend to do is go down it that way oh there we go there we go Get another beat out there quick. Stretchy like that. Eh? 
don't necessarily use the panel hook in this instance. Get the crab into that top box just free floating. It's easier to push it down the needle now. Leave a good tag end. A good friend of mine, Garth Griffith, showed me that. Leave the tag end there, something for the elastic to bite into. Don't be afraid of the elastic. Make sure you get it on there. And then pin the tag out the way and elastic the tag down. Something to hold the bait in then. Been some fishing on the end today, I'm a bit limited for casting, but I don't need to cast far really up here. Unless you're up on the top hook. But that top hook's free floating now. Clip him in. That's it. The rod I've got on the stand at the moment is my Zalcron XT Lite, 435 Lite, and I've got my T900. So let's get this out. I am too for me. Pen, Fallon casting specials, twenty-five pound mainline, hundred pound no, I tell a lie, eighty pound Rovex ten X shock leader. rig out. Um, I'm going to try and target a blonde today. Tides are good. Times of the tide are not necessarily good but if they're there you should uh, pick them up. It's a nice up and over rig. 4-0 tamer, 4-0 catfish. Same setup as what I normally use. 80 pound Rovex, hook length and I beef it up a little bit more on the, the rig body. 100 pound Rovex. 10x so put a bluey and squid bait on it so. just running through my bluey squid bait up don't need a bait needle for this but, uh, it's a nice nice little one it says perfect tail just behind the gills 
any leftovers you bake, just throw it over the side. <laughs> In this weather, it's going to be absolutely sick by the time it's baked, dries out and things. So don't be afraid, just throw it over the side. I mean, no one's got to stand in it. Especially using crab this time of year. It absolutely stinks. So hoping the squid up over the bluey. Don't be afraid with your bait, your sizes on the bait. If there's any small fish out there, if they want near enough, they'll take it. Pull the wings off. Get a little basic bind on it first. All right, and rod gonna go. Good bite on it. In through the squid. Get a good bind around that point duck. Round your knot. Get the panel lock up in. One, two, three. I got a little meat here, wants a bit of food today, a little starling. Bottom of the hook. Back over the knot. One half inch, two half inch, that's it. It's warm today, his bait is thawing out pretty quick. So the doggies have picked up both beats. Seven ounce lead again. Don't have to use a seven ounce lead up here when the tide's not pulling, but I just find using a T900 to put a little bit of a better bend in the tip. Um, you can see slack line is a little bit better, or pull over bites with that rod being bent over. If you've got a slack liner, it's obvious to see. Um, it's the same with that XT light. It's a nice bit of a bend in that as well. It's not as stiff as people think. You have that grunt as well then for bringing any fish in. Looks a bit aggressive for well not, a, not aggressive enough for the hound. Looks like a doggy. So let's get this one out and then we get that one in. I'll see that. It's not ideal, but Just the way I got the set up on my rods there. The top uh, cup is getting in the way and the rods rubbing on the top of the stand so just put it in so hopefully you'll still be able to see it. So let's just have another one last look at the rods. Let's 
See if the bike is still there on that right hand rod. Yeah. So the left hand rod, we got the bluey and squid, big bluey squid bait, which no doubt the doggies will it into. Apparently they were relentless here last night. Um, but then again, we've had a run on the first cast, so fingers crossed they're not going to smash all my crab before we eventually get into a hound. Only one would be nice, but a blonde would also be nice as well. So I'm going to get that rod in. There's no point in keeping them out there. Get a bite, leave it there for two minutes. If it's a dogfish, sometimes they might spit it back out, but nine times out of ten they will just sit there and eat it. So the quicker you get them in, it won't debug itself. So let's get it. In that instance here, always getting bites, there must be small fish out there. There's a little bit more crab on it as well, doing I'll just whip another crab into that. Um, if it was totally chewed up, I'd take it off, but let's get another one. Again, Let's open it out slightly. It is going to break up. Like I said, get your bait and needle, put it through. Come on, through again. It should be a little bit easier once these crabs thaw out a little bit, but. Back it into there. Doesn't look the best, but why peel it off, cut it off? We still got a little bit of scent in it, so. As I said, keep that. You can put that hook into the bait if you want, but sometimes I like to leave it free floating. Gives a little bit more movement. It's generally that hook that'll catch a fish in the in the side of the mouth. Keeping an eye on them rods. Back in the clip. Back out. Still get plenty of distance for that. I guess some people will say, oh, that's not very aerodynamic or streamlined or whatever. That bait is still going out there. All I'm doing here, you might see me in some of my previous videos. Once I've cast out 
to the lead cell. I'll lift the lead, I'll drag the lead with the rod. All I'm doing is trying to take the slack line. Um, if there's a bit of a wind, you'll get a bow in the line. So I'm trying to do, I'm trying to keep in direct contact with our lead. And also feeling that the lead is sort of biting in. So that's my setups for the day. And with a bit of luck, I'll get back to you with a bit of action. I've got some uh, ragworm as well, so from Kevin. It's the same with this. I can keep all of my elastic. Just need a little bit around his head. See him again. Don't need loads of wraps, need enough to keep him on it. Hold it all down until you get the size of the bait that you want. Whatever's left, turn it upside down. Bind that in as well, whatever's left. So you've got a nice little sausage here. Packed it all in. And tidy it up once. Uh, on the rig. Use ragworm for hounds as well. So the same setup. But what I'll do this time, I'll pull our top box through the worm. So slide it down. Get a good bind on it. Round our tag end like I previously said. Yeah, a little bit through the worm up the shank of the other hook. One half edge. It's just literally over my finger. Back through the loop and pull down. That's it. Pretty versatile he's uh these fixed panel locks, fixed panel rigs, sorry, this time of year, so you can put worm on it. They need big worm baits for the hounds. And that's clipped back nice and tidy, nice and streamlined. That one's gone. not advisable to wind a cast up if you're here with other people but there is nobody else at danger apart from myself and the big old white thing next to me the lighthouse let's get those crab out out there nice little has Not a bad deal, it seemed. Uh, yeah, you could do, bud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he come off. <laughs> off, is it? Yeah. Gogo, is it? Yeah, it was over, that was about 14, 15 pounds. That was a nice uh, eel I just dropped in. Put all the hooks up like that for some, somehow. See all the slime all over it. That was about 15 pound that eel was, ain't <laughs> Ah, we win some, we lose some. Let's get back out there.
Hey, small, eh? Tide's just uh, about to come to high water now, so let's get another one out there. Here we go. Big rag bait. Big, big rag bait this is. Nice to one back there, right? Wrap themselves up. Big rag bait. It's a nice male, that is. Just had a nice male thorn back. Surprising, it's about five, six pounds, huh? Quite big claspers on him. Took a big rag wind bait. That's what's left of it. Yeah. Summarise up and ready to go in our last, uh, last cast is out there. Um, have had a small bull hass, um, a small light, a thorn back, um, lost a nice eel just out about 30 yards out of the pier. It was about 15 pounds. It was a nice, nice eel. All the bait had wrapped up around itself. Um, played with no end of dogfish. But that's it for the day.